We welcome in Antonio Pierce. And, Coach, we begin on a somber note, the events earlier on Wednesday, the shooting on campus at UNLV. How did that affect you, and how did you address the team? Well, I mean, first and foremost, our hearts go out to UNLV, uh, to Las Vegas, the greater Nevada community, and, and also to the first responders, you know, just who put their lives on line as well to, to make sure everybody comes out safe. But um, obviously we'll say a prayer this, mo- this uh, morning in the team meeting, uh, give our thoughts and prayers to them. And, and, and as you know, I was just at the game Saturday yeah, supporting UNLV, watching them play Boise State. So as a Raider organization, our hearts go out to them. Nicely said, and as you know, that could help bring a community together, what you do, and the football team coming out, bring some peace and a distraction for all the people that were affected. Yeah, I mean, it's just there's really no way to get over it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Time is, uh, you know, you're always looking for answers why. Um, We see this over and over again within our country. Um, But more importantly, it's, it's just about us, you know, being together and supporting one another. And obviously this community is behind the Raiders, and the Raiders are behind this community. Let's get to the bye week where you were on the sidelines for some college games, multiple. What was that like for you coming from the college game recently, right. being there, representing the Raiders, and seeing those young players compete? It was really interesting how many players I knew. You yeah. Try to recruit, you know, sure. especially yeah. quarterbacks. There was a couple right. guys there I knew and, you know, touched base with when they were younger players. But mm-hmm. really good to see these guys competing. You know, championships on the line, Heisman, college awards on the line for some of these players. Yeah. And just to see them play in that environment, it's always great when, you know, it's not it's only, what, a handful of games on sure. TV in those two days? And you're, you got the whole world watching. And I think it was a great display by all the teams, uh, the way they competed, the way they battled. You know, there's always going to be a winner and loser, and that's the tough part about it. Also, as a season ticket holder coach, it was great to see an energy like that, an atmosphere, because you're down there coaching. You know that you really interact well with the fans, but to take a step back and see a legion sold out and packed that way. No, it was. It was good to see, especially for UNLV. That, I mean, that place was rock and roll. Yeah. It was red all yeah. over the place. And then the week, the night before with Oregon and Washington, I mean, just see that stadium filled up. And just what... We've been able to do as an as a organization to build a stadium like that, right, and where that's kind of like a place to be, where you want to play in, in that championship game in that stadium, and that's our home. So for a bye week for you, an energy guy, a coach, a former player, it's really different now in this role that you're in. How'd you get away, or did you get away, because you're always focused on the next one? No, yeah, I didn't get away, but did I, I did have a chance to reflect. Good. I had to pinch myself a couple times, uh, go back and reflect and look at, you know, meetings, practice. What I said, what we did right, what we did wrong, what I did right, what I did wrong. And then how can we get better? And that was the biggest thing. And at the end of the week, I figured that out and really put my, my, my hand in my, and felt a pulse of, okay, I need these three things to get better as a team. We need to do these three things, and, and we'll do that, and that's what we've been working on this week. I love the speech you made to the team with Max as the nominee for NFL Man of the Year. We'll get to his status coming up in a couple of days. But for you, that must have been special for the first time to address the team and have a nominee not only in front of you, but one that has an impact around the entire league. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about Max the player. Outstanding. Max the person, even more. Even better. Even a better person. Better human being. Somebody that I think a lot of young kids, even adults, can say, Mm -hmm. I can relate to him. From where he come from, right? Guy that wasn't the highest recruit, worked his tail off, to having personal issues that he's overcome. And now to see the production both on and off the field, the ability to get back to the community, get back to his college, to help his teammates out, you know, it's especially when you have that in your building. I mean, you can't have enough of those guys, but when you have one of them, you really need to take a step back and realize and understand the importance of that player. Everybody feeds off him. He's a tremendous Raider. Let's get into the game and Aiden, the off time that he got coming back with Bo as you're overlooking this and seeing what he's done right. He had a good game in his last game when it came to quarterback rating. What do you build on? Well, not just quarterback rating. I thought he did a good job. Took care of the football. Uh, Made the checks when needed Mm -hmm. to. Made some good throws really early on in that game. He was rock and rolling yeah, that was. first half. It was really pretty and good, good to see. And I think, you know, when you're going against the best player probably in football, mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes, MVP, yep. Super Bowl champion, and you can go toe-to-toe and give our team a chance, right? We're going to the fourth quarter, 21-17. We got a chance. And that's what you can ask for your young quarterback and OC. And I think what we've seen each and every game, there's different tales and different ways they've gone, but I think you have seen improvement. Seen a guy that's made the adjustments, that's getting more comfortable 
uh, around his teammates and leading and leading this team. I look at the Vikings. Let's start with Joshua Dobbs. He was named the starter this week as they also come off the bye week. He had a rough game his last game, but he showed a lot of progressive uh, progression. What he can do outside the pocket is concerning. When the pocket breaks down, especially a guy with not a lot of experience, his first instinct might be to run. Yeah, you don't like that. Yeah. You don't like that as a coach. You don't like that as a coordinator. You don't like that as a player because you're in a bastard situation, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're in coverage. You're 10 to 12 yards deep. Your coach say you stay back. But now I got this quarterback – you know, challenging me at the line of scrimmage. What do I do? Do I go up and get him or do I stay back? And now he has the ability to do both. And that's never where you want to be as a defender. But I think more important is going to come to our D-line, mm-hmm. doing what they what we talk about every each and every week, Cajun, pass rush coordination, keeping the guys in front of us, not running around the quarterback, you know, understanding that it all has to tie together with the mm-hmm. coverage aspect of our defense. And if we do that, we'll have a better chance. But this is a player as well that will give us opportunities down the field to make some plays for the Raiders. You talk about protecting players. I think the Vikings did that with Justin Jefferson. They knew they had the bye week to bring him back instead of rushing him back as they're in the playoff hunt. You look at him on film compared to some of the players pressing him at the line or having a safety over the top. Either way, you know the type of weapon he is. Yeah, you're watching the film like this. (laughs) You really don't want to watch it. But uh, dynamic player, one of the best in the game. He does an outstanding job of getting open. He's a great competitor. That's what I really appreciate about him, the way he competes each and every play, especially when the ball's in the air. Mm-hmm. I want the ball. He's that kind of receiver. Yeah. And listen, he's going to be fresh. He's going to be fresh, so we're going to have to bring our A game. TJ Hawkinson's interesting. He gets a lot of targets. There's been multiple games. He gets over 12. So with 80 receptions, you know he's going to be their featured guy along with Jefferson. Yeah, linebackers, safeties, DNs, all eyes on him, right? We, we can't allow him to have free runs up the field. That's, I'm not going to put him in that Kelsey world yet, but he's, yeah. he's, he's climbing. You know, he's not too far off. He's a very dynamic player, right? Uh, he uses that size and his height and his body, almost like a basketball player. You know, when you look at the skill set, it's a tough matchup for most teams in the National Football League. So we're going to have to do a good job of getting off this point. I like what you're saying because covering your career as a player, you didn't give a lot of free run to a tight end off the line of scrimmage. You would put your hand on it, make it difficult. You saw that with Kelsey, and now you come off the bye week and you see it with another player like that. you got to be physical with. Yeah, you got to. I mean, at the end of the day, when you got a special talent like that, you can't make it easy on him. He has to – the lines can be straight. They got to be a little bit more squiggly, you know, if yeah. that makes sense, you know. And then he has to fix his face mask every once in a while. As we wrap this up, I want to get a comment on Brian Flores. They're number one in the NFL in blitz rate. When you see that number, what does that mean, knowing this coach and what he likes to do? Yeah, chaos. Obviously, okay. he comes from the Belichick tree, understands how to give you different looks. They're doing an outstanding job defensively. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're dialed in. You have to watch it several times to kind of figure out what they're doing, and they change it up. Very well. So it's going to be a big challenge for our offensive line, our quarterbacks, and our receivers to make adjustments. Kevin O'Connell's a good one, too. He's a good play caller, and he adapts well when it comes to making changes at halftime, looking at the tape and the style of head coach that he is. Yeah, you got to expect after a bye week, we're going to see some things that we haven't seen mm-hmm. and we have probably prepared for. So we've got to go back into the, the, the history books and the film sessions and, and watch. You know, We did play these guys last year in the preseason. Yeah. So that's good film for us as well. But here's somebody that you know comes from the, the tree of the Shanahan McVay and those guys that he's going to take something from other games that he's seen, and we got to be ready for it. Finally, Coach, you don't want to hold back the fans. I don't want on radio, but the fans are ready to go because they're looking at – two games in four days. In this room, we just talk about one. We won, and then we go into that. But yes. a unique opportunity, rested, healthy, trying to get players back and have an opportunity in front of you to start stacking wins. Well, I'll tell you what, the fans have been great all year. Be honest. Win, lose, or draw, they, they show up. And we're going to continue asking them to show up. And our players are you know, going to show out. And I, and I think the more important thing about it is that we keep making this place a difficult place for other opponents to come in and play and make it a home field advantage for the Raiders. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. 